Hey everyone, we're in the market for a new carpet cleaning machine for the rugs in the house as well as the carpets in a car. We've had these stand-up machines as well as the ones that you could carry around. Each of them has gimmicks, but they're all made out of that cheap, thin plastic and you know they're not going to last that long. This time we're looking for something different, something that was a bit more rugged at the right price. And while I was looking, I come across this, a VacMaster Wet Dry Shampoo 3-in-1, 8-gallon 5.5 horsepower looks a lot more rugged than anything else that's being offered 209 delivered with a $20 off coupon only has 17 ratings and I've only found it on Amazon nowhere else not even on the website for the company that makes the product I checked the entire website this product doesn't even exist so it looks like we're going to run on a little bit of faith and chance but I think it's worth it so I picked one up. Let's unbox it and then we'll assemble it and we'll try it out. Half a liter of cleaning fluid. This is a telescopic tube. Here's the remote control handle. A rear wheel. Another rear wheel. Here's a floor brush attachment. Here's a squeegee for that attachment. This is the large carpet lance. This is a small carpet lance. Here's the floor vacuum nozzle. And the main unit, of course. Got a couple of items still down below. Rear wheel axle. And then the instruction manual. Let's lay everything out. We still have more items inside the unit we have to unpack. This portion will be addressed later. Here's the hose. This is a round dust brush. Wheel assembly supplies. Crevice tool. These are some classy hubcaps. Here's a dust bag. And a foam wet filter. So we'll flip this unit over so we could lock in the front wheels that just press in and clip. And then we'll put in the washer, then wheel, then washer on this axle, lock it in with a pin, slide that axle through, and repeat that washer, wheel, washer process, locking in the other pin, and now we got the rear wheels in. Put on our hubcaps on the side, drop on that other hubcap, we could stand this back up. I'm going to unscrew and unlock this plate here on the filter for the top piece, and pull this piece off because we're not going to use it because I'm only using this as a carpet cleaner, not as a vacuum cleaner. I'm putting on this wet foam filter. I'm going to point out for this video that this is only going to be used in this video as a carpet cleaner, as in a wet shampoo carpet cleaner, not in any vacuum cleaning capacity as a conventional vacuum cleaner. So this is how it's going to be done. This foam filter goes on, and now I'm going to place this right back on, lock those clips back down, and we're done inside that container. We'll reintroduce the detergent tank now and put the connecting hose back onto the cap. The suction hose is screwed onto the front of the unit. The detergent delivery tube is then snapped into the fitting. The remote control handle is locked onto the suction hose. It is keyed. Then the detergent delivery tube is locked on to the remote control handle. It is also keyed. The telescopic tube is then affixed to the remote control handle. And I'm placing the larger carpet lance on the telescopic tube. It's a press fit. And then I'm bringing up the hose through this guide. And then from the guide, it will connect to the remote handle. And that concludes unboxing and assembly. Let's begin with some tests. Now, in the very early days when Lily rescued us... Hey, Lily. She's just going to grab Joey there. In the early days when Lily rescued us, she had a couple of incidents, unfortunately, during some housebreaking training. Right over here is one, and right over there is another. We're going to be focusing our attention on those areas. I'll also make mention real quick that as we had folded this and put this outside after we cleaned it, there's a raise there that we're just going to have to contend with. But first, we're going to have to vacuum this carpet. Like I said, in this demo, it's going to be used strictly as a carpet cleaner, like a rug shampoo carpet cleaner, not as a conventional vacuum cleaner. For this, we'll be using my Dyson V11. I'll post links about this vacuum cleaner up here in the top right if you're interested in a vacuum like this. I use the electric brush head doing multiple directions and angles. 
to remove absolutely as much dry dirt and dust as possible before we proceed. Let's test the suction and go over a designed idiosyncrasy. When I hit the power, nothing turns on. It's not supposed to. We have to use these buttons also found on the remote. I turn on suction. We turn it on. You see suction, very good. This will work just fine for what we need. I'm shutting it off also from this keypad as well. I can also shut it off from the main up top. We'll remove the reservoir here to put in some cleaning solution. We're gonna mix that up now. I don't want to sound overly pedantic, but for those who don't know, as the book says, mix three ounces per one gallon of water, as some might then look at the container and see that it is in liters, not gallons. If you go just a hair under the four liter mark, just a hair, a couple of millimeters, that's a gallon. It's good enough. It'll get you where you need to go, three ounces in that. We can see this container is now filled just under the four liter mark with some warm water. I have three ounces of the cleaning fluid I've put in this bottle, pre-measured. Now pour that in now. I put my hand over the cover. And I'm just going to agitate it and shake it just to mix the contents around a little bit. Put that container back into the unit, placing the cover with the line back on. You see the controls are pressed right here on the remote handle, not on the unit itself. There's a suction adjustment here. Make sure it's in the closed position that's open, that's closed. I might consider taping mine shut. So this is sprayer and this is vacuum. They could be run in tandem. The first time I pressed the sprayer button, it sounded like something wasn't working right. The liquid definitely wasn't flowing from the bottle. Seems that during assembly, I hadn't snapped this fitting all the way in and that was the cause of the problem. So be sure to look out for that. So now it seems to be working fine, just purging a little bit of air in the beginning, but we have flow through the sprayer. So I'm working around this square meter and I'm just trying to wet the carpet for initial testing. Just lift it up so people could see the pattern. This first test is more a test of the machine. This particular area of the carpet was under a table. It appears to do good work of pulling the liquid out of the carpet, both in vacuum only mode and when vacuum is running in tandem with the sprayer. So I tested both of these features in this corner. It's time to move on to an actual carpet stain. This is gonna be a targeted area where I'm gonna pre-spray the stain with the liquid. Now I'm gonna do a couple of passes, vacuum only, until I've removed all the liquid that I've sprayed into the carpet. And I could see, looking at the color of what's coming up, we're definitely removing whatever was in the carpet. And I can see that the stain is being removed. I'm going to do a couple more passes as I do the entire carpet. But this was targeted stain removal. And it was in fact successful. We can see that the carpet's looking really nice. And the stain is gone. I then proceed to clean the rest of the carpet in the exact same manner. I'm only going to stop when I hit one of the other stains that I had mentioned earlier. Or until I have to mix up a new batch of fluid for the reservoir once the reservoir becomes empty in the back. I stop the target stains directly as they come up, using multiple passes as necessary to completely clean that area. Nothing actually soaked through except in areas that were treated for stains. There's a slight amount of buckling on the sides, but we're going to let this fully dry and that should come out. We're going to let this sit, and then we're going to vacuum it out. We're going to drain this in the tub just to see what came out of this carpet. So I'm going to disconnect this fitting first, and then I'm going to unscrew the hose. Remembering there's a low traffic carpet should be interesting. I'm going to remove the reservoir container now. We'll bring it into the tub, unscrew the cap, turn it on its side. Yeah, that water's nasty. This thing did a good job. Pulled all that dirt and grime out from the material of the carpet. So we're going to cap this back up once this empties. We're going to move on to another test. Here's a carpet with high pile. 
This left side, we're looking at the white patch, is under a table, and the right side's a high traffic area. I'll tell you that with a high pile rug or a shag rug, you could be putting a lot more work in with a carpet cleaner like this. Uh, I'd probably have to do pre-scrubbing or something like that. It is possible we see that it is brighter and the texture looks a lot better after it was done. But again, a lot more work is involved in doing this kind of rug, I found. So yeah, expect to put in a lot more work for high pile rugs, definitely. Before I move to the car, I want to show the rug where the unboxing was done. I did this entire rug, show it before and after a snippet of a white section of the rug. This one came out real nice. We're going to move over to car carpet and upholstery cleaning now. I have a feeling this will do even better in cars, and I'm going to explain why. I've removed the telescoping tube and the larger lance. This is being replaced with the smaller lance. Same amount of suction, but less surface area. We're going to lock this hose in. Also, that telescoping tube doesn't feel structurally very strong. I feel like I could exert more pressure down on the carpet without it. I'm going to test using one of the car mats first. I realize a car mat can be cleaned outside of the car and therefore it doesn't require this machine. But it's made out of the same material, so it's a good idea. We can use it for testing and see how it works. So I'm going to vacuum it first. I'm pre-applying some of the cleaning fluid on this carpet first as we're doing some testing. After I get this sufficiently covered, we'll begin running the vacuum tandem with the fluid. And as I run this, we can see just black coming up out of this carpet. It is filthy. And the thing about this is it is so dirty. There's so much dirt inundated in this carpet that I could really just keep cleaning this for hours on end, pulling dirt out of this and ultimately get it clean. The question is, is this method effective? We can hear that pump getting louder. That means I'm out of fluid again. So I stopped to refill the cleaning fluid. One of the things that would have been nice is a larger reservoir tank, given that it holds eight gallons of wastewater. At least two gallons instead of one gallon would have been helpful. I find myself refilling it too often. We could see that definitely the machine does remove dirt from the carpet, and therefore it's going to work well for what we needed to do in the car on the carpet. And we're going to find out how well it works on the upholstery and the internal fabrics of the car as well. So the car mat proved that it worked, but at the end of the day, a car mat, I could use a much more appropriate method for removing the tons of dirt from it. Let's move on to the interior where I can't use a garden hose. This is the driver's side. I pre-sprayed this area. Then once it's soaked in, I clean it just like I did the car mat. Notice how I stopped to close that suction adjustment. I seem to do that a lot. And this has a lot less dirt because obviously the mat takes a lot of the damage, but this attachment is small enough that I'm able to get all the sides and around the curves and corners and it cleaned up really nice. To some extent I even used it to spray and clean the rubber padding over here on the floor. It did a good job on this carpet. This car has fabric armrests. I'm going to pre-spray these. It would be a little difficult to do this because the camera is in the way of where I'm trying to work. I'm trying to capture everything here. Pre-spray and now I'm doing the spray with the vacuum tandem. I realize it looks like it's spraying a lot, but it's just dropping right onto the ground outside the car, so there's no problem at all here. And it really is pulling the dirt right out of the material. I was actually quite surprised how well this was working. And as much as it's dumping the liquid in there, it's just sucking it right up. I mean, nothing's really staying into the fabric. And there we go, that is clean. All the brown, all the stain is gone chose the headrest next this is uh, one of the things that also gets pretty nasty so it worked out really good just as well as it did on the armrest I realized I had to stop again to shut that suction adjust which keeps opening this machine definitely excels in cleaning the upholstery it was just as effective on the side and middle of the seat this side area also receives a lot of dirt and becomes dingy that came right out. The middle of the seat wasn't really dirty, but it also cleaned up very nicely. Now the passenger side has a water stain here. This has to do with the way that the AC is designed and how mud daubers get into the drain in Florida. I'm going to use this opportunity to see how the carpet can be cleaned. Just addressing this big stain, you can see there's like an orange silhouette in the carpet. 
Now those two black spots, that's mastic. I'm going to have to remove that with kerosene. We're not going to worry about those. There's no way that the carpet cleaner is going to remove that. I did like five separate cleanings and orange was still coming up out of the water of this carpet. I'm confident that as I keep doing it, it would keep getting brighter. I want to save this for another cleaning device that I'm going to be working on in another video, especially here on the corners where I can't reach. So I'm going to leave this as it is, but it would work after uh, more time was spent on it. Here's a pasture seat that holds car parts for many of my other videos. I'm just going to show the perimeter of this seat, just scan around the entire perimeter. This is a before, and then I'm just going to show you an after. This is amazing how this cleaned up. This looks like it just left the factory. There's not a speck of dirt, grease, or oil left on the fabric. Like I said, this seems to work very well for the fabric inside the car. Everything came out. Dirt, oil, stains. It's all gone. Here's a nasty area on the driver's side seat. And here's as I was working through it. And here it is cleaned up spot just removed. I'm going to take a moment to drain this nastiness and see what came out of the car. Yeah, that's terrible. The machine did a great job. Let's move on to one last automotive task. This is on the headliner of 82 DeLorean. This is where your head kind of touches and leaves a stain and I want to see very delicate. I'm going to move to low vacuum and this is just glued on felt. So I'm trying it out and increasing the suction as i'm confident that's not going to cause any damage and a little bit of liquid vacuum it out a little bit of liquid vacuum it out and i'm seeing that it's getting brighter every time a success story i'm only doing the middle part i'm just vacuuming the sides to make sure the water doesn't leak into it this was done about six times and then it was left alone to dry completely overnight take a look the next day the stain is completely gone there was no damage to the felt. There was no release of the glue. This is a definite win. I'm very happy with that. So before we finish this, let me just recap the few things I found wrong with this product. There weren't many. This telescopic extension, I think it was a bit over-engineered. doesn't seem very robust. It has some give to it. I feel like if it's working fine now, in another year or two, it's probably not. This suction adjust function was a complete failure. Probably the most annoying thing about this unit. I'll probably cover it with tape. And finally, attention to detail. If you're going to sell this in the United States, we use gallons, not liters. Other than that, the device was a definite win for the price. Marrying a shop vac with a carpet shampooer and putting the controls directly on the remote handle is a winning combination. Well, that's it. I hope you found this video informative and entertaining. Click that like button down below. Click that subscribe button for more videos. Helps me out a lot when you do. Again, I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. <laughs> Would you like to reply? <laughs>